minor two five going to the relative minor A minor. <laughs> Hey, Steve Hortica here. I'm going to be talking today about demystifying the art of playing rubato. Something I've been getting really into and working with my students lately on is just this whole concept of space and freedom and not feeling the constrict of time. I think so often when we play and when we're practicing, there's this idea that you kind of have to practice with a time feel in mind, and everything needs to be played within this construct of time. And for me lately, it's been actually really liberating to explore harmony and just taking my time expanding on my knowledge of chords and vocabulary without having to play along with a beat. <laughs> So what's so great about this is it allows you to take a magnifying glass and really just focus on areas where you need the most work through a tune. So today we're going to be looking at You Are My Everything, which is a beautiful standard written by uh, Harry Warren. And I first became familiar with this tune because of a Freddie Hubbard record, which he records it on, called Hub Tones. It's just a beautiful song and there's a lot of different chords in it, so this is a really great one to really focus on, try and find areas that maybe you're not as familiar with. So let's just jump into it. Uh, I'm just going to play through this in a rubato kind of style and I'll talk about what I'm doing and then at the very end of this I'm going to play the entire piece rubato so you can kind of hear how this all fits together and, and how it becomes something that you can use in your practice sessions and you can really just apply this to literally any tune. So the first thing I like to do is just play through the melody and just make sure that I, I know where all the phrases are within the melody. So the first phrase of Fear Me Everything. <laughs> Phrase number two. And then while I'm doing this, I like to try and think about what chord I'm on. So at the end of that phrase, you're coming into the F sharp minor, B7, E minor, A7, turn around, going to the D minor chord. So check it out. And then that leads you to the third phrase. So we're on a D minor chord there, and then you're coming into the fourth phrase. And then that goes G7 to F minor major 7. That was the next phrase, E minor 7, E flat minor, D minor 7. That's a phrase number six, and that's a two five coming back to the top of the tune. So the second time around, the harmony changes. So it goes major one chord, and then it goes tritone sub. Going to the four chord, so. And on that four chord, you're playing the sharp 11 of F7. Next phrase, D minor again, and then you have that 2-5 going to the relative minor, and then final phrase. So let's go back to the top now and then I'm going to use the chords where the phrases of the melody end to play some rubato lines that take me to the next phrase. So check this out. Next phrase. And then we're in the 
phrase number three, and that's going to be over D minor seven. Phrase number four. Now we're on the G7. And then that G7 goes to an F minor major 7. So if I were to play that phrase, I'll play both of those chords maybe as my response to that particular phrase. So G7, F minor major 7. So the next phrase is played over a couple different chords, so I'm not going to spell those chords out because the phrase is actually covering those chords, but when I get to the end of the phrase, that's a good place that you can play some transitional material to get yourself into the next chord. Minor 2-5 going to the relative minor, A minor. back to one. So there I did a tritone sub. And that's one thing I really love about this so much is that you're able to explore different substitutions that you're aware of. And then this is where it does the tritone sub. And then we're on the four dominant sharp 11. And that goes to the minor three. And then on to our next phrase, which is over D minor. Two five going to the relative minor. So all of that phrase there is melody, so I'm not really going to try and interject much there. But at the end of the phrase, I end on that D natural, which is the third of a B flat 7 sharp 11 chord. So I might expand a little bit on that chord. And then on to our last phrase of the melody. And for the last two chords, sometimes I hear people go from A flat major seven to a D flat major seven, which gets you back to the C major seven at the top. So, and then you're back at the top C major seven. So that's basically it. For me, this has been just a really great tool to go back and, and take tunes that I kind of thought I knew and realize, you know, some of the melody notes or some of the chord changes I wasn't actually that familiar with. So I'm gonna leave you with a version of me just playing through the tune. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe, tell your friends about it. There's also gonna be a PDF download on my website, which is in the description of the video below.